Talking Tom and Tom Tugger Ben here. Welcome you to our first episode of Talking Tom Ben News in a very long time. Let's get right to it. President Donald Trump on Friday repeated his threat to close down the border between the United States and Mexico, but this time he noted he would act next week if Mexico doesn't step up. Trump in Florida on Friday afternoon said he would close the border to trade for a long time and insisted the U.S. had run out of detention space for undocumented immigrants. Trump's comments follow a period in which the Department of Homeland Security and border officials have said the resources have become strained. It was a very busy weekend on the campaign trail for the 2020 presidential hopefuls. Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, and Jillian Castro were all in Iowa to attend a forum yesterday. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris and Cory Booker, two rival U.S. senators, pitched themselves as steadfast allies of LGBT Americans yesterday evening. And former Texas Congressman Beto O'Rourke formally launched his presidential campaign in his hometown of El Paso yesterday morning. We want to turn now to breaking news. Former Vice President Joe Biden has responded to allegations that he inappropriately touched a Nevada political candidate. In the statement, Joe Biden says, In my many years on the campaign trail and in public life, I have offered countless handshakes, hugs, expressions of affection, support, and comfort. He goes on to say that he has not once, never, believed I acted inappropriately. If it, if it is suggested that I did so, I will listen respectfully. But it was never my intention. Lucy Flores, a Democrat who served on the Nevada State Assembly, wrote a piece for New York Magazine's The Cut on Friday, alleging that Biden inhaled her hair and then kissed her before a campaign rally in 2014. Biden has been going for a potential presidential run and has led early polls of Democratic candidates for 2020. President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, lambasted current and former top officials at the FBI and the Department of Justice yesterday for the years-long investigation into President Trump's campaign and Russian election interference. In an interview with Janine Pirro on Fox News, the former New York City mayor predicted that evidence of criminality on the part of top FBI officials would be uncovered. Giuliani added that his suspicions were limited to top brass at the FBI, adding that field agents and regular agency personnel were just trying to serve their country. The union representing Chicago's police officers is gearing up for a protest tomorrow outside the Cook County Prosecutor's Office, calling for a federal probe into why 16 charges against actor Juicy Smollett were dismissed. The Empire actor was accused of staging a racist and homophobic attack. The Chicago Police Department says it intends to try and recoup the money they spent on the investigation from some uh, small ads. The actor denies that he staged the attack and says he wanted to stay consistent in his story the whole time. Alright, now for a first look at weather in sports, let's send it over to Chalk and Ginger. Thank you very much, Ben. Well, despite the fact that it is spring, our temperatures are still a little bit more below normal for this time of year. In addition to that, we're still dealing with flurries, and there will be multiple chances for that throughout the week. But the real question is, when will our temperatures rise? I'll have that in your sports update, including updates from the NCAA March Madness Tournament, coming up. Thank you for that, Ginger. Also coming up, a Georgia man is killed after knocking on the wrong door. Details straight ahead. And up next, a former New York Knicks player is being accused of rape. That and a whole lot more after this. This episode of Talking Tom Bad News is sponsored by Capital One. Welcome to Banking Reimagined. Welcome back. An attorney for Christophs Porzingis acknowledged yesterday that a woman has accused the NBA star of rape but said the Dallas Mavericks forward unequivocally denies the allegation. Lawyer Roland Riopel said the claim was part of an extortion attempt that is being investigated by the FBI. News outlets reported that a woman went to police on Thursday and said Porzingis raped her in his Manhattan apartment last year while he was playing for the Knicks. NYBT officials declined to comment. A man in South Carolina will be charged with murder in the flaying of a college student who may have entered his car mistakenly thinking it was a rideshare vehicle, police in Columbia said yesterday. Samantha Josephson, 21, a student at the University of South Carolina, had last been seen by friends early Friday and her body was found hours later by two hunters. 
Surveillance video showed jo jo Josephson entering her car the morning she went missing. Police pulled over black Chevrolet Impala matching the one of the video earlier yesterday morning and arrested Nathan L. D. Roland, 24, after a foot chase. Roland will be charged by the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division with kidnapping and murder. A Georgia man was arrested Friday after police say he fatally shot a 19-year-old man who accidentally knocked on the wrong apartment door. The shooting victim, Omarion Banks, was dropped off at the Retreat Apartment Complex in Atlanta around 12.30 a.m. on Friday. According to police, Banks and his girlfriend recently moved into the building and Banks, still unfamiliar with the area, knocked on what he thought was his apartment door. Banks had reportedly made an error approaching the door of 32-year-old Daryl Bynes instead. According to the police accounts, the pair had a short conversation before Bynes went inside, grabbed his gun, and shot Banks as he tried to get away. Bynes was arrested and booked at the Fulton County Jail where he is facing murder charges. Hello everybody, Talking Ginger here. It is time to take a look at your weather forecast. Well, the weather is not quite adapting to the new season just yet, but we expect it to over the next few weeks. Anyways, today I expect to make the sun cloud, but there is a marginal chance of flurries early. Our temperature will be around the freezing mark with a wind chill of minus 11 in the morning. Tonight we'll see partly cloudy skies and a low of minus 8 with a wind chill of minus 13 overnight. Tomorrow we have another marginal chance of flurries and a high of plus 2 with a wind chill of minus, of minus 12 in the morning. We have a much better chance for flurries in the evening. As we take a look at the week ahead, Tuesday, we could be looking at some more snow or rain, maybe even a little bit mixy between two, but Wednesday, I suspect, is the best chance for snow this week. After that, our temperatures will begin to rise with a high of my, uh, high plus five on Thursday and a high of seven on Friday. Moving on to sports now, and we're nearing the end of the NCAA March Madness Tournament with two spots in the Final Four already being filled. The number one Virginia Cavalier has held the number three Purdue Boilmakers 80 to 75 in overtime, while the number three Texas Tech Red Raiders won over number one Gonzaga 79 75 69. The Red Raiders will play the winner of Duke and Michigan State, which goes at 5:05 p.m. Eastern. The Cavaliers will face the winner of Auburn and Kentucky. That game goes at 2:20 p.m. Eastern. In baseball, Bryce Harper made his first Phillies moment a memorable one. He crossed a solo home run deep into the second deck in right center field in the seventh inning yesterday evening to give the Phillies a 3 1 lead in an 8-6 victory over the Braves. And in basketball, LeBron James is officially done for the season. Lakers President Magic Johnson issued a statement announcing James wouldn't play the final six games. With the Lakers already eliminated from postseason competition, there is no obvious reason to keep him on the court and risk additional injury to his groin. And that is all for me, Talking Ginger. Now back to you. Thank you very much, Ginger. That is going to do it for us today. Remember to stay tuned to TV51's channel for more Talking Tom and news. For now, though, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.